Welcome everyone, my name is Jessie Robertson from the website jessierobertson.com and in today's video we're going to relax, grab our favorite beverage, and we're going to zone in and learn to paint some realistic water droplets on a lush green leaf. Let's go ahead and take a peek at the supplies we'll be using for our project today and then let's begin. For brushes for this project, we'll be using a nice big number 12 flat brush. This is a one inch wash brush. Number six bright brush. Two round brushes. The big pointy one there is a number six round and the little one is a tiny little number one round. These are great for feathering the colors inside of our raindrops and doing the little rounded edge details. And the brush we'll be using most for today's project is a little number six flat brush. This is a quarter inch rectangular shape brush. Now to get some of these fun textures on the close up of our leaf, I really enjoy using painting sponges. So you don't have to use these squishy guys. You can just go ahead and add texture with the tip of a big brush and I'll show you how to do that too. But these make really fast work of getting some of that texture because we've got an extreme close up of our leaf so we can see all the little details and bumps and veins. For sketching on our raindrops before we paint them in, I love using white charcoal pencil and the generals are really fantastic. I've been using these ones for years. Whenever we're working with acrylic paint, we need to make sure we have a nice jar of water and mine's just right next to me off camera here. So make sure you've got your water nice and close. I just have mine right, right, just a few inches uh, off camera, just to the side right here. For paint colors for today's project, I want you to have a nice dark green. I'm using a dark permanent green, but please feel free to use any dark green. You can use hooker's green, you could use chromium green, you could even use phthalo green. Phthalo, blue, phthalo green has a much more blue hue to it, so you can always tint those greens if you want them to be a bit more of a grassy green like this with yellow. So have a nice dark green, have some yellow. I'm using a medium cadmium yellow. I want you to have several blobs of white for creating tints of our colors. And of course, just a little bit of black for creating that beautiful cast shadow in our raindrop. Now, whenever we're working with acrylic paints and we have water, we also wanna make sure we have some paper towels really close by. These help clean our brushes off after washing them, and sometimes we want to use a dry brush for certain techniques like dry blending. If you live somewhere really hot and warm, you don't need a blow dryer, but I find, especially whenever I'm applying thick paint like with a sponge, I love having a blow dryer handy dandy. This just, on when you blow it on the hot setting, dries those colors extremely fast in between layers so you don't have to wait. You're going to need something to paint on. Today I'm working on a nice small size this is just a tiny little eight by 10 canvas, so it's barely bigger than my short handle brush here. Working on smaller canvas sizes is really fun. If you cramp for space, this can be a great way to, you can clump little studies and it's a great way for doing rough work and exploring textures like water and leaf, which is really fun to do. We're gonna begin by pulling in the green color of our leaf, and then we'll be creating some of the textures of the veins for them after we pull on some base texture. So let's go ahead and mix up our main leaf color. Now I like to use some plain dark green, but I also like to use a little bit more of a medium green that has some more yellow in it. Whenever I'm mixing paints today, I'll always be using my number six bright brush. This is a half inch square shape brush. And if you see it on its side, it's got really compact little bristles here. So it works fantastic in lieu of a palette knife. And of course, if you've got a palette knife, you can use that as well. So let's make a bit of a medium green to go with some dark green. Shovel over a little bit of white into your green, just to make it a bit lighter, a bit brighter. We're mixing a tint, and tints are whenever you add white to a color. So here we have a lighter tint of the dark permanent green. And then I also wanna change the hue a little bit by adding some yellow. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's because we're painting in winter and there's been a lack of these juicy bright greens. But I'm craving these high summer lush green color. So just a little bit of yellow in permanent green can really make it more on that warm kind of grassy green side. Uh, and I can make this exact same color as permanent green with phthalo green, by the way, just by adding substantially more yellow to it. So you know green is just blue and yellow. So no matter what green you have, you can alter its color. You can make a more blue green by adding more blue to your green and you can make a more yellowish kind of warm uh, grassy green by adding more yellow to your color. So your leaf can be any hue of green, any color of green that you really like. 
So we're going to toggle between some of our dark green and some of our medium green. Now I'm going to use my painting sponge here to create some texture. Now if you're working on paper, you don't have to worry about your side edges. And you never really have to worry about your side edges, but uh, some people like to add a bit of color around the sides in lieu of framing them. It can be a way of finishing them off. So you can toggle between your plain dark green and your light green. And let's just wrap a little color around our side edges. Uh, and you may have picked up, this is a gessoed canvas, so I had another painting on here, and I gessoed over it. Uh, this gesso is a great way to reuse a canvas for another project if you don't want to keep. Uh, maybe you just used it for a quick study, or maybe you did a painting that you just, you're not going to keep, you're not going to give away, so you want to reuse your materials. Adding a coat of gesso essentially makes it like new. If you've never used gesso before, I have a great video on gesso that I'll just put in the banner right here. So if you click that uh, later on, you can learn all about gesso. It's great fun. Saves, saves your materials for another day. Okay, so I've just shimmied some of my green around the side edges using my brush. Now whenever you're done with the brush, put it back in its watering home. And we're just going to get on up in here with a sponge. If you don't have a sponge, use a nice big uh, brush. Uh, so you can use a big brush or a sponge to create texture. If you're using your big brush, you'll just go in. And it doesn't have to be this big. This is a very big brush. And you can just start tapping some of your light and dark green colors together using the side. And that's just going to create some fun texture to kind of mimic the, the texture of a leaf. However, if you are lucky and you've got some painting sponges around, these make extra quick work of adding texture. So I'm going to go into some of my medium green and look at that. Isn't that fun? Now you can kind of rub to fill in bigger areas. And actually having some physical texture on here, like if you've got some little lumps and bumps, that can be quite fun too. So this is meant to be quite subtle. If we look at the demo painting here, uh, you can't pick on it. It's not really hugely highly contrasted. So we don't have really uh, wide variety between light and dark or extreme texture because we want the raindrop or the dew drop to really shine as the focal point. So whenever we're bringing a visual attention to an object in a uh, painting plane, we want to make sure it has the most contrast because contrast draws the human eye to it. But we do want to still set the backdrop of having our leaf, our garden leaf. So we want some subtle texture. So I'm just coming in here and with my juicy, juicy sponge, dipping it right into that paint. And you can use your sponge just like a brush. And when I pull it and dab it, it's going to create such fun texture. And I did not work from a reference photo here. Uh, I just kind of pulled, I, I'm a gardener, so I've looked at a lot of leaves up close and you know I know that the leaves are there to bring sugars and waters to the rest of the plant and it's where they make their food. Um, but if you want to have a picture of a leaf, because maybe you don't spend a lot of time staring at leaves, you can, or if you want to paint a specific leaf for a plant that is meaningful to you or someone you love, just grab a photo and you can kind of work it work it from there. All plants have, you know, central veins and then these little secondary veins. So you can match your green to a plant that you or someone you know really loves. And that's the great thing about learning the basics of textures like leaves and water drops is you, you can stop using a reference photo once you know the basic principles of how light works through see-through objects and the main direction that veins in a leaf run. You can just you can make up your own fantasy purple leaves or okay so here we go so I hope you can pick up this this texture on the canvas it's really quite subtle and of course you can go rogue and go wild and have as much or as little texture as you want I'm just gonna match the uh, reference painting here as close as possible but I love seeing your rogue paintings. All paintings are beautiful. All paintings are different. Even when the same painter paints the same painting, it's always different because we're a little bit different every day and we are not robots. One 
once you have your juicy main coat on, we're going to let this dry. And then we're going to add a few other bits of texture into our leaves. We're going to add the central veins running down, which is the largest, lighter ones. We'll add some secondary veins, and we're also going to tap in a little bit of lighter color uh, in the segments of our leaf here. So we started with a darker color and then tap a little bit of lighter color in the segments. And what that does is, do you see how long the stem here and here and on each side of the veins, it is actually a slight bit darker. That's because this, these larger veins are actually tubular in shape uh, and they're gonna cast a little bit of a shadow. So we're gonna add another layer of color and texture to our leaf backdrop before getting into our raindrops. So you can, of course, let your painting just dry naturally, or if you have the impatient painter gene like me, you can go ahead and grab your trusty blow dryer and we'll give this a little blast. If you're not used to working with a blow dryer, you can use this on the hot setting and just give it a little uh, blast with your blow dryer. If you're working quite close to your palette like me, you may want to give it a little spritz with a spray bottle before getting in here. You can reuse your painting sponges again and again. I want you to just go ahead and give this a rinse out and squeeze out all the excess water. Uh, we're gonna use it again for another segment of this painting. So if you don't have two, I often rip these in half so that they fit in smaller spaces, but you can use your painting sponges many, 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 many times. Just give them a little rinse. Once your background is nice and dry, it's time to start pulling on those center veins. So rinse off your number six spray brush and tap it on a napkin. And let's mix ourselves a bit of a lighter color. We want these main veins to really, really pop, but we don't want them so light that they're white. Remember the most contrast, meaning the darkest dark and the lightest light is going to be in our central raindrops. But I have this as being a nice kind of lemon lime green. So we already have some light green here. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more white to create this fun lemon lime color here. And I'm gonna paint a nice thin line and I'm gonna do that using my number six spray brush. So when we wanna make a nice thin line, just make sure, and you don't have to use your fingers for this, make sure it's pulled down to a nice thin edge and wipe at your paint instead of kind of pushing down. And this preserves the tip of your brushes. So here we go, let's plot down our center stem. I'm gonna plot down our center stem and where or we might like that. So at the top here, I'm gonna push a little bit harder so that my line is thicker. And down. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger yet. So this is gonna be the center stem. And then we're gonna pull off some side shoots. So pretend this is, you know, a whole leaf coming down to a point, and these are the veins that are reaching, reaching out to the edges of that, of that plant, of that leaf. So typically we'll stagger them so they're a little bit lower on one side and a little bit higher on the other. So if you see this vein comes out a little bit higher than this one. They're very close together, but they're gonna be staggered just a little bit. So we can start towards the tip of our plant if we like, and I'll just pull out and down right from that main stem, using our light green.
any of your stems got a bit unruly or a bit too large for your liking, you can take some of your background color, just tone them down a little. Want them to get a bit thinner towards the ends. At this point, if there's any really patchy parts, you can tap a little texture on there. Once you have your main veins, your central veins running through your leaf, shaping it up, we want to pull in some of these secondary veins coming out, these smaller ones. However, before we do that, let's tap in another layer of texture. I usually mix a nice um, yellow limey green in there. It's a little bit darker than the center stem. So rinse off your mixing brush, your number six bright brush, tap it on your napkin. And then let's use a bit more of our medium green, but add a little bit more yellow to it, making it this fun lemon-lime color. We want this to be just bright enough that it differentiates itself, that it pops out from the background. So we're going to get in there with our sponges again. So make sure your sponge isn't soaking wet. I wash the sponge off, and then I just squeezed it really, really well uh, in a napkin to make sure it was um, mostly dry can be a little bit damp, but mostly dry. And then I'm gonna go into this color and we can tweak it if we want to. So just picking up a little bit of color on the sponge and then I'm just gonna rub and tap. So I'm gonna pull this color centrally inside here, leaving a little bit of the darker color around the edges. So I'm, I'm gonna leave it a bit darker surrounding the stem. And you can rub anywhere you want the texture more blended and tap anywhere that you want it more obvious. So this is just a fun way to build up our texture. So I'm leaving it a little bit, I'm pulling this essentially leaving a little bit of the darker parts show through. This color is just ever so slightly lighter. So it's going to be a little bit darker around the edges of our stems because they're, again, tubular shapes in there. Gonna cast a little bit of a shadow. So here we go. And you can squeeze your sponge, of course, to get it into smaller areas, or you can cut a sponge down if you have a really small area to be even a smaller shape for you. You can rub with your sponge anywhere you want less texture. You can dab anywhere you want more texture. But these little guys work just like a brush and they get some really fun marks. So I don't want really super duper bright contrast again in this area because we are gonna let our raindrops be the star of the show. So we don't want the background to visually compete with the, with the contrast of our main, our main shapes. Or you know, maybe you do. And if you do, that's a stylistic choice, like to have crazy all over pattern. 
is wonderful as well. And that can just be a real smorgasbord for the eyeballs, but it's a different, a different look. So I'm gonna kind of keep with the mood of the demo painting. Uh, but please, if you wanna have crazy all over pattern, uh, I don't wanna make it sound like there's anything wrong with that. That's really quite lovely as well. But to get the effect of the raindrop being the focal point, we have to make sure to keep our background subdued. It's just part of a, a type of a style. There's no wrong way to paint. There's just different ways that create different looks, different atmospheres, different moods. I already have more contrast on this leaf than my first one as I'm talking about it. You know, when there's only one thing on the canvas, our brains want to make it, bring it to life and give it contrast. I'm gonna hold off a little. I'm quite happy with my leaf today. I hope you're happy with yours. From this point, we do want to, again, let this part of our painting dry so that we can come in with our secondary veins, those smaller veins. This is going to be it for our sponges for today. So if you didn't wash it before, make sure to give your sponge a little squeeze and then you can reuse these little guys again and again. It's time to start pulling on some of these lighter, more secondary veins. So you could use either your little number one round brush or your tiny little flat brush. If you use this flat brush here, you wanna turn it so it's the long skinny edge on your painting. We're gonna use a nice light lemon lime green, just like we did for our stem, but we're gonna make it a little bit more see-through by adding some water. We want the center stem to be the brightest, most noticeable part of the leaf. And we want these to just kind of fade in as background texture. <clears throat> so we're gonna make sure it's not quite as bright, and we're gonna make it a bit more see-through by adding some water. So I don't know about you, but I am out of my lemon lime green, so I'm rinsing off my number six bright brush, and let's just mix a little bit more. Again, we're going to start with a blob of green. We're going to smooth in some yellow. Oops. We're going to smooth in some white and, of course, some yellow. I usually do the white to get it to the value I want first. Okay, so this is a great color, a nice lemon lime kind of green, just like we did for our center stem. Just like we did for our center stem. I may even come down this bad boy again just in case. And when I'm using this bright brush, I'm using, you know, the tip of it right on the canvas and I'm just pulling down, making sure that those bristles are pulled down to a nice thin fin whenever I want to get a nice thin line. So we could definitely add a little highlight down the center of these main stems just to make sure that they are visually dominant. And I'm not coating the whole thing. I'm trying to go just through the middle. This color is ever so slightly lighter, so it's gonna act as a highlight. And if we put a highlight kind of right down the center wherever we can, center-ish, it doesn't have to be exact, it's gonna make it look a bit more round by adding a highlight on the, the top, most bulbous part of that tube shape. Okay, so now our center stems are brightened. And take your time, you can pause this video whenever you want. Now to do those secondary stems, to make them a bit more see-through, we're going to drip some water into a little bit of this color. So I use my brush, just taking huge scoops. Got a nice puddle of water here. So my paints today are like the Liquitex soft body, so they're quite runny already. They come quite runny. If you're using a hard body paint, like maybe you're using a, a Golden or Galleria, if your paint is thick, 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 like toothpaste, you'll need to add even more water. I like to get this to about the consistency of coffee creamer, and you can see it just kind of drips around here in my palette. So it's a nice juicy bit of color. <laughs> I tap into it, it will splatter everywhere. And now that we've got that, you can make again those center veins. With either of these brushes, if you use this, this number one round brush, you're gonna use the tip and you're gonna make sure to pinch it down. If you use a square shape brush, you're gonna use the long edge. 
Now these center veins, let's go kind of minimal with them at first. The water will help make it be a bit more see-through. I'm gonna grab some color and tap some of it off even so I'm, I don't make them too strong too fast. A lot of these veins are gonna come right from the center vein. I'm gonna sweep out, not in rigid lines, but soft, soft, come straight out. And then one of them might split open and become a soft Y shape. And of course we can connect some of these. These are gonna to connect to the other main stem. So these are transporting nutrients back and forth through the plant, up to the leaf, down to the stem, and even all the way down to the roots. So it is just like our own circulatory system in many ways. So these can connect out to these ones. I often think of them as soft little Y shapes. And I try to keep this fairly minimal. We can always brighten some of these after we put our raindrops on. I suppose it could be dew drops too. You know, raindrops sometimes are more, the shapes aren't quite so circular or ovular. Raindrops can fall quite heavily and then spread out, whereas, you know, dew drops that form in the morning tend to be a bit more like perfect circles or rectangles. So I'm following the main curvature of these main stems before it coming up and off. You know, this leaf would be closing up to a point around here, so reaching up and off a couple. I don't want them to be matchy-matchy on each side. Some center ones and then the, it's almost like gentle Y shapes coming off. So there's the center band and then some gentle Y shapes leading out, connecting with the main stem as well as the little side stems of course. And if you want to be really fancy and take your time, if you've got a stretch canvas that has side edges, I think it can be quite fun to actually take your time and pull all these little lines around, but it is not necessary. Some people just don't have time and don't want to bother with that, but it can be fun. So let's do all of our little sections here. If you're having fun with this, painting textures can be so much fun because we can always apply them to future paintings. So I really thought of today's project as um, kind of like rough work for exploring and practicing our uh, raindrops and our leaf textures, our close-up leaf textures. So, you know, let go. Don't feel like it has to be perfect. Just keep going and keep painting. If you're new to painting, especially with getting these thin little lines, uh, it does take the right brush. So you have, your tip has to be um, small through the whole thing. So, oops, there she is. So my tip is quite small. This is a number one. You can get even smaller. You can get number zeros and, and then even into the negative numbers, the decimals. So having a little brush. And then of course, getting the right amount of water to help your paint flow and then the right touch. So when we push harder, of course, our lines are gonna get thicker. So that is not something that comes naturally to most people. That's something that us, us artsy folks, we take time, time to uh, develop and it gets easier each time. So every time we pick up a brush, no matter how long you've been painting, whether you're new to painting or have been painting for 26 years, uh, there's always something new to learn. And even if you painted for your whole lifetime, you could never learn everything. Uh, and my favorite thing about painting is even brand new beginners could discover something new and wonderful that someone that's been painting for decades has never done before. Uh, I've been painting for about 26 years and I paint with uh, beginners and as well as intermediate and advanced artists. Uh, and I learn something new from, from everyone that I have ever uh, had the pleasure to work with. They always 
surprise me, they try new things, they do something that maybe I wouldn't think works, but then it ends up looking so beautiful in their project. And I think it's great when we get together and paint together and share our work and, and learn from each other. And it makes it a little like a community, like our own artist movement, the happy artist movement. I'm rambling as I'm doing these veins. I have been primarily using this little number one brush, but I did in fact mean to do most of them in this brush. This is typically my favorite brush. Um, so when I use this brush, I pull it down to a thin fin. I just pull it down and then you can do the same thing. And to get a thin line with a square shaped brush, you don't go dead on 90 degrees. Turn it on an angle and ooh, look at this. This gets lovely thin lines. And of course, in a bigger painting, when I'm trying to get a thin line over a longer space, this is a little eight by 10, so these uh, little round brushes work well. But if you have to get a straight line over a really long area, then I actually prefer these little square shape brushes. I want you to get a nice all over pattern of some of these. Again, that water will look quite bright when you first put them on, but the water, as it starts to evaporate out of the paint, will make it look a little bit more uh, see-through. So get an all-over pattern on the way you like it. Then I want us to add a little bit of a highlight down our main stems just to pop them up even more. If your main stem is really sticking out, then you can just leave it. I'm going to go ever so slightly into some way. Just a little. I don't want this color to be majorly brighter. Than this color so I'm actually just pulling from the tip of this white pulling it into my color to make sure I don't get it too too bright and I'm going to pull a highlight down the center stem so again using the side of this brush and I want this just to be very subtly more bright and a bit bigger than those the secondary stems remember we can always add more highlight but once we get it too far then it can be hard to go back. So I like to go slow when I'm looking for just a subtle shift of value of lightness or darkness. All right, my friends, when you have highlighted your center stem, your, I keep calling it a stem, <laughs> when you have highlighted your center veins so that they're just a little bit brighter, making sure they're just a little bit bigger, then we are done our background for now and we're going to start pulling in our raindrops. While we're waiting for our glorious leaves to dry, let's go ahead and start talking about how light behaves in a raindrop. Something I find very helpful to remember for transparent objects like water is that they act the opposite way of a solid object. So when light hits a solid object, and in this painting my direct light source is coming this direction. The direct light source is hitting here. Now if this were a ball shape, then where the direct light is hitting, this would be the lightest side of our object and then it would slowly get into shadow as it gets further away from the direct light source. So this would be all shadow and then there would be a cast shadow. And we do have a cast shadow here, but as you can see, it's the opposite. Where the direct light is hitting and is the strongest, it is a shadow in behind and then there's a highlight on the opposite side. Let's talk for a second about why that is. 
So here we have a picture of a ball, and you can see where the light is hitting the top of the ball. It is really, really light, and as it gets to be the opposite side of where the direct light is hitting, there is it gets darker. So the ball is getting darker on this side, and then it has a cast shadow just like a raindrop does. So the reason the raindrop is shadowed on this side and has a highlight on this side is because the light is passing through the object. It's also refracting and reflecting. So the light hits the raindrop here, so we have a really bright, our brightest highlight is where the direct light hits it. Now this light enters the raindrop and light moves slower in water than in air. And it undergoes something called refraction, which means the light bends and it spreads out, it disperses. So the light moving slower starts to separate and disperse, bouncing into the raindrop and spreading out. So when the light hits the back of the raindrop, it actually creates a highlight where the shadow would be. So the light comes in, spreads out, so we have a really, really bright direct light wherever the light source is hitting our raindrops. And then we're going to have a more spread out highlight on the opposite side. And you can see this in all of these raindrops. So the light is hitting here. And then there's a more spread out highlight on the opposite side. Whereas in our ball, in a solid object, it is totally in shadow, farthest away from the direct light source. So light bends, it hits. Some of this light then bounces back this way and it casts a bit of a shadow on the opposite side. So that is why we have a shadow on this side of our raindrop and a very lighter highlight on this side where the light has refract refracted, has spent and spread out. Now, of course, some of this light, because it's see-through, makes it through the raindrop. So we have a little bit of a reflection in the shadow of our raindrop. Whereas if we look at our ball, there is no uh, light passing through the object, so it has a very solid shadow. So I always remember when I'm going to paint a raindrop, if I don't have a reference photo, that where, wherever my light is coming from in my photo, there's going to be a bright highlight, and that highlight will be in the shadow side, and then there'll be a highlight where the cast shadow is, and the cast shadow comes just from the shadow of the solidity, the solidness of the raindrop itself. So I hope that helps. We're going to paint a bunch of these uh, raindrops, dew drops, water droplets now, and we'll hammer it in and we'll get lots of practice so that we can apply these basic principles to our future projects. Whenever I'm drawing on a background that is a little bit darker and white will show up on, my favorite thing to sketch on with is a white chalk or a white charcoal pencil. The Generals is great. It's got a lot of uh, pigment to it. And the great thing about chalk is just like in the rain with chalk on the sidewalk, you can just wipe it off when it's done and you don't have to erase it. You can, of course, use a regular pencil. You'll have to erase any of the marks that you don't like. You can also use watercolor pencil, which is just watercolor in a stick to draw um, on top of a painting when you want to add an object onto the background. And here you can see my little chalk marks that are uh, in my raindrop. And I can take this damp sponge and you can see I can just wipe it off like it wasn't even there. So that's why I love using this chalk. Now we're going to use our chalk today to plot out where we want our raindrops to be. You don't have to have quite this many, but I wanted to have about three of them. These two are really my focal point. I actually have three, and then I pulled in some little uh, raindrops around them. Now I like to think I'm looking at this leaf on from the side. So I like to think of these as little dew drops, which are these almost little perfect beads that can be on a leaf. Um, so these are like circles, but because we're looking at the leaf not flat on, but from a bit of an angle, they appear to be oval shapes. And now I've got some pointing this way and some leaning more down, but I have a bunch of oval shapes. You can do these as circle shapes, and you know, you could even have uh, one dripping down. And if you did my After the Rain tutorial on my website, we did uh, dripping water drops. So you can apply the same principle of how we're going to add value to these to any shape of raindrop. They don't have to be perfect ovals. But for the sake of this lesson, I'm going to be using oval shapes today. So I'm going to have one really big raindrop. Maybe smaller one. 
medium sized. I know these light pencil marks can be really hard to pick up on camera, but you will be able to see yours at home. And of course, I'm, I'm you're just doing kind of random oval shapes on our on our leaf. One, two. Some really little ones here at the tip. And sometimes I think it's fun to have one, you know, coming off of the of the page somewhere. I have a little one coming off up here and just wrap this bad boy right around. Take your time. As soon as you are done sketching them on, you can set your pencil down. We're gonna start going around the edge of our raindrops. I like to go around these in a little bit of a blackish green color. So I'm gonna be using my little number one round brush. I wanna make some black that's much more runny. So I'm gonna drip some water. I'm gonna grab a little scoop of plain dark green and I'm gonna add a little bit of black to it. Make sure your color is nice and runny for me. So clean dark green and some black. So you can see when I smoosh this out on my white palette here, it's actually a really dark, dark forest green color. We want lots of water to help our color flow. And these round shape brushes with their um, pointy edges are really great for getting round shapes because of course, they're just a few bristles wide. So they themselves bend and curve. So we're just gonna go around the parameter of all of our raindrops, and I'm right-handed, so I like to start at the top, so as I come down, this way I'm not dragging in. If you're left-handed, you'll wanna start at the top and then slowly move down uh, to where your hand drags in the least. So let's just take our little brush and swoop around our shapes. Swoop around our shapes. And the nice thing about our chalk is that you're not committed to that line. If you want to switch it up, of course you can. If you're like, you put a raindrop on, you're like, oh, I really want a bigger one somewhere. You just go ahead and do a bigger one. I want you to sketch on the shape of your raindrops. Once we have the placement of our raindrops, our composition plotted out, we're gonna start filling them in with value. So we'll put the bright highlight from the direct light source coming on after. What we're gonna do first is fill in the shadow, the midtone, and the lights, then the cast shadow and the reflection. So shadow, midtone, light, 
And then, you know, you can do your bright highlight first and then your cash shadow, or your cash shadow and your highlight. But we do need to get this kind of triad of colors in. Shadow, mid-tone, light. So let's go ahead and mix up those colors now. I'm going to be mixing my colors. I'm going to mix my colors with my number six bright brush here. So our shadow color is going to be just some of our plain dark green. So if you don't have some of your dark green handy dandy, make sure you've got some. And that mid-tone is going to be some green, some yellow, and some white. So a nice mid-tone. And sometimes you may want two mid-tones. You may want to step down again. So you may want to go then a little bit lighter even. So it's less of a jump. So this could be shadow. Because we're going to get a nice fade. Shadow, mid-tone. And then really light and then white. So here we have really shadow, mid-tone, really light, light. So we've got three colors just in case we need them. We'll want to make sure our outlines are nice and dry. Mine are pretty much dry already, so we can go ahead and just start filling in these drops. So let's closely observe this gradient that we have here. So we have our darkest band coming around. I'm going to have my light source coming from up here. If your light source is coming from the opposite direction, your main highlight is here. It'll just be reversed. This will be your dark side. So dark, mid tone light. But my light source, I'm going to keep it pretty much the same. I'm going to have it coming in from about this angle. So I'm going to have my shadow, mid tone, and then highlight. So here's the shadow. It's bent. Then that mid-tone starts to bend with it and then bend out towards the highlight color and we'll pull in the highlight color. You can start with your highlight, then mid-tone shadow or shadow mid-tone highlight. That's totally up to you. We'll just pick one way. I'm going to start with my shadow for our main ring job. I'm going to go into a little bit of this color on my number six flat brush. So that tiny little quarter inch flat brush. And I will be going right over top of these shadow lines, so I'm not going to, they'll just kind of peek through and add a little bit of depth, but I want it to be a little band of just some plain dark green. Again, I'm going right over top of that shadow. It's almost like a crescent moon where it's going to get a little bit smaller at the edges here. Again, I'm going right over my black color, and I want to blend this out, so I'm going to quickly tap my brush off. You can even rinse it. And then quickly tap, don't take too long. So I'm gonna to start to shimmy this out a bit. I'm gonna do little dabs, little dabs. I'm gonna get into a little bit of my mid-tone color, just the tiniest bit, and then I'm gonna tap my brush off. I'm gonna blend a little bit of this in. Just don't want any straight lines. Our leaf is textured, so you can blend by Tapping a little bit. There's our mid tone color. And then a little bit of her lighter mid tone color. And remember, I want to go right over top this black stuff. Just grabbing tiniest little bits of color on the tip of my brush. We can always tweak these after if we want more shadow or more highlight. But right now it's just important that we get a nice little blended gradient in here. So dark and then moving into the lights and last but not least rinse tap off excess water and go right into a little bit of your white. Just again, a little bit of color, maybe even less. And I'm going to go right over top of this black outline. It'll just kind of shine through, adding a bit of depth to our, our drop. So here's that lightest shadow. Again, we're going to crescent moon this out. So I'm going to start to pull it out, out at the edges. And I'm going to just gently use the fat part of this brush to tap it in. So it's going to get skinnier, kind of like a crescent moon. This one's like the opposite crescent moon of the shadow. 
gonna get skinnier. And I'm just gonna start to use the fat part of my brush, just dance and tickle over this area to blend it in. So this is that gradient part of our raindrops. And then so here's our shadow. So where our light source hits here will be really important. So let's fill our gradient in all of our raindrops. You can decide, of course, if you want to take some of your dark color and beef up the shadow or add more midtone. And don't worry about having all the little uh, details in your leaf parts disappear. I added quite a few of these in after as a finishing step to this painting. But we, we're worried about the gradient. Don't worry about having it be actually physically see-through. It's all good. I just want nice little bits of shadow, mid-tone, and highlight. My aggressive shading is jiggling. Okay, so here we go. Once we've got one, we can go ahead and do the rest of them. Fade out the shadow. Bring in the mid-tone. Going right over top of that original dark line. Rinse. Tap. Just a little bit of weight tap some of it off, and I'm always trying to tap in this same spot. I'm tapping in the white part for the white. When it comes time to some of your smaller droplets, you may need to use that little number one round brush just because your bigger one likely won't fit in there. But I want you to make sure your shadow part is in the same spot on each of your drops, even if it's on a different angle. So even though this drop here is angled down, my shadow is still on the exact same spot. So, you know, this little guy, he's kind of, looks like he's gonna start to drip down here, doesn't it? My shadow is, you know, on this kind of angle, I need to make sure my shadow is on the exact same angle. Shadow, mid-tone. tone down a little bit of my dark outline with some of this mid-tone color just to shape up the drop and some of that shadow will still shine through even though I've kind of come around it with some of this mid-tone color it's still going to be there to shape up the drop sometimes in the smaller drops I just use this really light color for the highlight I don't use the pure white you can see that in some of these drops here so these ones have really bright white, whereas this one's more like a lightish green color here. 
So for the smaller drops, sometimes I don't have them have the full kabam with the contrast. And that works really well. Again, you could start from the light side of some of these drops. It doesn't always have to be the dark sides. The exact same thing, just in reverse. Start with this light color. Never be afraid to mix an in-between color. You know, if you need a step that's in between your midtone and your shadow, you want to make something that's a step in between, then you just mix some of those colors together. So sometimes I'll do that if I want a little bit of an in-between color, not quite the shadow, not quite the midtone. So remember with our raindrops, it doesn't matter how we get there, as long as we're moving from the same, the light to the dark, the light to the dark, the light to the dark. So for this little guy, just pull in this light color first. Now I'm going to blend in some of the dark color. I may choose to highlight some of these further. You can always do that later on.
We're going to keep working in these light, mid-tone, and darks. Let's get into our raindrop on leaving the side of the page. Pulling some darks around the side edge, just like the full raindrops. Darks, mid-tones, into those lights. Take your time. Just enjoy this part of the painting. You've done so many raindrops now. You're going to be a pro by the end of these. Now we want to get a basic base coat here of our highlights, mid-tones, and darks. We can always tweak these a little bit later by brightening some highlights. And the real shape is going to start happening when we pull in our cast shadow to make these look really 3D like they're sitting on the leaf. Let's just keep working in these values. We're going to start getting into some bright highlights. If you want to have some focal points with some of your raindrops, and I brightened the reflected shadow in a few of my drops to really bring them out and give it a focal point. So in this painting, I have two raindrops that I think could make really, really great focal points. So choose two of your biggest raindrops in your composition and it'll just accentuate that reflected highlight on the left-hand side some white, just bring it in, bring it in. Don't be afraid to swoop around the edge of your drop, just cleaning up that shape. Once you get it in, you're going to take your brush, if you can get it a little bit wet, tap it off, and then just fuzz the white in just like you did with that first pass. We're just brightening it, we still want to keep it nice and soft. And because the light is bouncing around in here, some of that light is reflected back. So you can use some of your light color to go around your raindrops, around the parameter to help clean them up. I'm going to do these two raindrops really, really bright. Going around. just tapping that in. So you can tweak your highlights and also your mid-tones. So you might want to come into some of your juicy mid-tone green color and really beef that up. So you want to get our colors the way we like them in our drops before getting into those cast shadows. You want to add a bright highlight on all of your raindrops or just a few. It will really depend on how much light you got there through the first pass, how dark your background is.
Just tap it in gently. Anytime you want some mid-tones, sometimes to transition from the white to the darker, darker greens, adding a bit of a lighter green can help smooth out that transition. Especially on this vocal drop here, this the largest drop that's closest to us, keeping some nice high contrast in there can be great fun. Often kind of swooping around the parameter of my shape. We can do it with the light color now, and then we can do it with our shadow color later on. Just tweak your gradation. It's all about the light, the tones and shadows and keeping it soft. And of course, we're picking up green in these as the shadow and highlight color because this is, of course, a green leaf. But you know, in many of our projects, the background might be a different color. So we could be using uh, you know, if this was on a red leaf or um, a wooden background, the mid-tone would be, would be picking up the color of the substrate that is underneath of our drops. So we're green today, but this could really be done in many, many, many colors. And never be afraid to get your finger in there and rub a little bit if you want to. Touch your background, make sure it's nice and dry. We're going to start getting into the highlights, the bright direct light reflection into our raindrops. So make sure the darkness is nice and dry. If it's not, then you can just go ahead and hit it with your blow dryer. We're going to start pulling in the direct light. We want that in the shadow side, and we want it to be coming into the same spot in each drop. Now you could have one little dot, you could make it round, you could make it rectangular if this was reflecting the shape of a window, but whatever we do, we're gonna go into some plain white and you don't have to have water in here. Tap a little bit off. This is gonna be our brightest, most direct highlight in our raindrop, so come in. I like to have a bigger one and then a smaller one underneath. So if this light source is coming from a window, it would actually take on the rectangular shape of a window. If it was coming from the sun, you know, we might just have a little tiny dot. So, you know, in my bathroom, I have these lights and they're uh, like six lights. So when I look at little raindrops on the counter, I see six tiny little lights reflected in the highlight side. So you can start observing raindrops and where those highlights are. But for our project today, I want you to pull those highlights in the shadow side and please make sure it's in the same spot on each one of your drops. And I'm just gonna do two little ones. And they're gonna curve. The light bits are gonna curve with the shape of your drop. Okay. You may need a little brush to do those little tiny ones or just the corner of your number six flat brush for me. You've got this. They're looking so good and reflective now. So please pull on those reflections. Now that we have our reflections on, we're going to start working on the next part of this painting. We're going to start pulling in the cast shadow, the shadow that is underneath the drop, making sure that it's a nice three-dimensional object. You can see my brush here, there is a shadow coming on the left hand side because my light is coming directly from this side, from the right hand side. So you can see that cast shadow. And here's my graphite pencil, you can see the little cast shadow again because that light is pointing from the right, creating that little cast shadow on the left. So we want to have that little cast shadow in our raindrops as well. It's going to be exactly the opposite of our drop. We're going to be working with our number six flat brush. You could also use your little number one round brush and we want to have a nice 
uh, green colors. I like working with the plain dark green to start. The little number six flat brush is nice because we can use that little soft edge. It's going to be the darkest right underneath the drop and then we're going to fuzz it out so it sort of disappears so it's not a super hard edge. So let's start tap some of that paint off so it's not super dark. Use your plain dark green, your dark permanent green. You could use a little bit of black in there if you want to darken it, but I always like to darken it slowly. If it's too, too dark, it starts to look a little bit unnatural. So coming onto the highlight side and just go nice and slow. You could clean up your edge here. You could use your plain green or your plain green with a tiny bit of black. You go cleaning up that edge, cleaning up that edge. following the shape of the curve to get a little bit of water in there. I switch to my number one round for this. It's great for these round shapes. Here we go. Especially cleaning up the edge and you can go all the way around your drops as well. Because we're looking almost flat on to the raindrop, you see a little bit of a cast shadow all the way around but it's gonna be much stronger on the side opposite the direct light. So we're gonna start pulling it out here. Just go nice and slow. Even a really subtle cast shadow can accentuate the three-dimensionality of our shapes, really popping them out and looking realistic. So I'm using soft body paints with a little water in it to help it flow. If you have heavy body paints, please, please, please add lots of water. Maybe a little bit thicker directly under the drop and to the left hand side because our, our light is coming from the right hand side. If you remember that pencil, or you can see the pencil right there and you can see its cast shadow is opposite. You can even see the little blob of black paint on my palette there. It's a, sh a shape very much like a raindrop, only it's not see-through. You can see that little blob of black paint has its little cast shadow there. And if you want to darken any areas, just go ever so slightly into a tiny little bit of your black or that blackish green color that you made. Kind of sweep around. Use your finger to rub. Okay, there we go. Pull one of your cast shadows in. And we're going to get into our other one. So we want to keep it the same place on each side of our drops. So once I finish this big one here, pulling it in. Go back into that color. And this drop is on a little bit of a different angle, of course. But we still want to have that shadow in approximately the same spot. Little bits of color tap off anytime you need to. Use water anytime you need to. You can always darken these later. You've got this. Good. And we're going to go ahead and do all of our drops. Again, you can go around the whole drop, not in a thick, dark outline, but just very lightly if you need to clean up that drop. Having a dark parameter is just fine because remember, light is bouncing in all different kinds of directions. So casting light and shadow on each side of the drop. So don't be afraid to use your dark or your mid-tone or your light to help swirl around the edge to clean it up for you. 
those little bits of variance can actually help make your drops look a bit more realistic. Darkening right next to the drop if you want to add a little bit of black in there. Shaping up your drops. Blending it up. Okay, keep going. Taking a step back, whatever you need to do, make sure that your shadows are consistent-ish. And we're not doing exact science here for uh, blocking out our past shadow, uh, but we do want to do our best to keep them in approximately the same spot. relax. Enjoy this part of the painting. We've done so many raindrops now. Keep on keeping on with our shadows. Take your time but don't fuss about this too much. They don't have to be perfect. 
just want to have darkness that matches the curvature of our raindrops on the opposite side of the direct light source. Okay. Sometimes they wrap right around the side edges with this little side guy. And again, don't be afraid to swoop all around with a bit of the shadow because it's a raindrop. Of course, we've got shadows a little bit on each side, and they're very forgiving. Once you finish your shadows, go ahead and rinse off your brush. We're going to start getting into the next part of the painting, which is going to be pulling on some reflected light. We have our direct light source coming from the right-hand side, and it shines right through the drop, creating a bit of a reflection of the light in the cast shadow. So we're going to use a really light color, either white or light green, and tap a lot of this off, get it nice and juicy. We want just a little bit of a light color. We've got that light passing right through, so we're going to have a bit of light right here. That's shining through the drop into the shadow. So use your little number one round brush, and make sure the color is soft, and just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I'm going to blend this out. So this is going to be exact opposite of the direct light source. So you can use your finger and tap it. Lots of water for me, lots of water into that paint. And you want one of these in the shadow side, in the cast shadow. And you can tap on a couple of them and then fuzz them out if you would like. But because the raindrops are clear on like a ball, of course some of that light passes right through and it hits into the cast shadow side of the drop. We want this reflection to be a little bit more muted and not as bright as the direct drop. So where we've got that bit of direct light, it's going to be super duper white on the right hand side of the drop. And this little bit in the cast shadow is gonna be a bit more muted. So add lots of water, tap it in. So put a little bit of paint on. You can even tap off your brush and then fuzz it out, fuzz it out. And this really helps bump up the realism of our raindrops when you can see that bit of light shining through the transparency of the drop. Take your time with this, pause anytime you need to. Once we have these bits on, we're down to the last few steps of our painting. The next thing I want us to do is get into pulling in some of these secondary veins that show through the water drop. Now light bends through the water drop, so some of the veins showing through are gonna be a little bit more shifted. They're not gonna exactly line up with the lines underneath. So I like to take a brush like my little round brush or my flat brush. I like using some of the nice light color. We're going to try to match the color that we had the first time. And we're going to go ahead and as a last minute tweak to our paintings, we're going to pull some of these little secondary veins through our raindrops. Now the most see-through part of the raindrop is in the medium green color. So where there is a pure, pure highlight and a pure, pure shadow, it's a bit more blocked out, but we're gonna see lots of these veins popping through in the mid-tone area, in that middle green area of our raindrops. So there's a bright shadow here, and that's gonna kind of block out the see-through part of our raindrop. Let's go ahead and start pulling in some of these streaks in the center parts. So remember the shadow part and the light part are going to block out the most light. But in the mid-tone, in the green part, we're really going to see some of these secondary bands coming through. We want to match our color to the first color that we have, which is kind of this lemon limey green here. Add some water. Okay. You can always start slow and beef it up later. Make sure to add lots of water just like we did the first time. We're going to have this nice and see-through. Here we go. We will have one coming right through. 
and another one coming up from this little vein below. It can be just a bit offset because remember, like Ben is in water. So like when you're looking at a straw in a glass, it looks like the straw's shifted a little bit because of the speed of the light in the water. So it doesn't have to exactly link up with the veins below. It can be close, but just a little shifted like this here. There you go. So just have fun with this. Pull some of these center veins to your drops. If you have just a few of these or a lot, this is the last step to our painting today. So just relax and enjoy. You can have a lot of these or just a little. Sometimes I like to take a really bright color and beef up my center stem. Keep calling it a stem. These central veins, sometimes I like to, you know, lighten these veins. But we are in these last minute tweaks of our painting. So it's always wonderful at this point in our project to take a step back. Maybe you wanna really brighten a few of these little secondary veins or your primary veins. Anything that your intuition tells you that you should brighten or darken, now is that time. You can really beef up some of the highlights on the left hand side, especially in the main focal point drops. And you know, if you pick a couple drops to have more contrast than all the rest, so where the highlight's a little bit brighter. And again, you can wrap a little bit of this highlight all the way around because the light is bouncing off the back. Some of the light passes through and some of the light bounces back out through the other side just the nature of transparent objects. So you can definitely add little bits of highlight color if you think it will help really pop out that raindrop. Just the brightest light is gonna be uh, in the main side. The secondary lights are gonna be a little bit more muted. Just looking at my painting and adding Final highlights, just a little bit of paint on my brush. And some of these little drops. And you could brighten it with a bit of white or you could leave them a little bit more subtle. And the painting I've done today is quite a bit more subtle than the one that I did the other day on the left. You can brighten some of these reflective lights too. Step back, take as much time as you would like to tweak your project. When you're done, put your brushes, rinse them off in their watery home. Then you can take a deep breath because you just finished your painting project for today. Well, I hope you enjoyed spending an afternoon painting these realistic water droplets with me. My favorite thing in the entire world is getting to see your finished versions of these tutorials. So if you share your raindrops to social media, be sure to tag me at Keep It Colorful so that I can find you. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified when we have upcoming tutorials. I do live events here on our YouTube channel as well as technique videos, and I have over 100 plus tutorials over on my website at jessierobertson.com. Our next upcoming live event is going to be this fun, drippy honeybee. It will be March 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna bust out our stencils and water down our acrylics so that they can be used almost like a watercolor. It's gonna be great, colorful, and drippy fun. Well, that is it for me, everyone. I hope you have a beautiful day. Keep on painting, and until next time, of course, I hope you keep it colorful. Take care. Bye.